Autoimmune disorders are conditions where the body's immune system, for reasons that are still a bit unclear, uh, start attacking the, pa uh, the patient's uh, own tissues. And autoimmune epilepsy, the immune system in that situation, uh, is targeting neural, uh, nerve cells and targets on nerve cells, uh, causing injury to the nerve cells, and uh, epilepsy is the resulting uh, consequence. Uh, autoimmune neurologic disorders can have symptoms beyond epilepsy and seizures. Autoimmune epilepsy refers to those patients whose immune uh, disorder has led to seizures as the uh, seizures and epilepsy as the primary uh, clinical problem. Autoimmune epilepsy presents with seizures just like epilepsy. Typically, however, uh, the seizures at onset are much more frequent than most cases of epilepsy. They tend to uh, uh, arise uh, fairly suddenly or subacutely, uh, patients may have seizures even more than one per day uh, from the outset, and that's unusual for most patients with uh, epilepsy, at least adult onset epilepsy. That's one, uh, that's one red flag that tells us I better think of autoimmune epilepsy in this particular patient. Uh, there are other clinical signs and, and suggestions that raise the possibility. If a person has an additional autoimmune disorder, such as type 1 diabetes, a uh, condition called vitiligo, where you get deep pigmentation of the skin, uh, immune thyroid disease, other immunologic diseases, and then come down with epilepsy, we start thinking uh, this patient may have an autoimmune cause for their epilepsy. Um, with autoimmune epilepsy, there are often additional uh, neurologic symptoms that occur significant declines in memory, sometimes movement disorders, uh, other uh, clinical features beyond the seizures, which clue us into uh, perhaps this is an uh, autoimmune epilepsy disorder rather than um, just epilepsy. After one is recognized a person may have autoimmune epilepsy, a key to the diagnosis is having a laboratory available that can run um, neurologic antibody tests to help make the diagnosis. At Mayo, we're uh, uh, very lucky that we have a world-class neuroimmunology lab whose one area of specialty is identification of these neurologic antibodies. Um, the people who run the lab actually work just down the hallway from me, so the opportunity for collaboration on uh, patient cases with potential autoimmune neurologic syndromes, the collaboration potential is immediately available. Um, the laboratory is identifying a new antibody annually, sometimes twice a year. Um, so that growth in identification of antibodies has really expanded our knowledge of and ability to diagnose autoimmune epilepsy. Um, these technologies have mainly been available the last 10 or 15 years or so. Coming to a specialty center who is uh, knowledgeable about this disorder is essential. Uh, there, uh, this is a newly recognized entity. Really only in the last five years have uh, people started to recognize that there are epilepsy syndromes that appear to have an autoimmune cause as their basis. Um, many clinicians at other centers just don't see the volume of these types of patients to be able to readily recognize these patients in an ongoing, uh, in an ongoing basis. Here at Mayo, our antennas are up all the time for these patients because we've seen so many of them. And I think that's probably uh, by, by virtue of uh, Mayo being a tertiary referral center. So we've kind of attracted uh, patients with these unusual presentations of epilepsy, and that's given us uh, uh, the advantage of seeing all kinds of cases and having a uh, very good feel for uh, the presenting features and also the diagnostic um, um, uh, process uh, to render a, a, a specific diagnosis.